All right, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are going back into Windows Server 2019 today. We're going to add a password policy and then we're going to add a Windows 10 system into our domain. So first thing we need to do is we're going to go up to Tools and then drop down to Group Policy Management. It's about, about halfway down there. You're going to hit that little button right there. That's going to bring up our window. You'll see it. we're at Forest Home Lab. I'm going to expand that a little bit. We hit our domain. We're in Home Lab right there. Uh, if you look at our home lab to the right, you'll see group policy, linked group policy objects. We're going to hit that, and then you'll see that GPO. We're just going to right click on the de uh, default domain policy, and we're going to edit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to allow us to hit different aspects. Then we're going to hit policies, expand that down a little bit, and you'll see Windows settings. We're going to expand that a little bit, and under that, you will see security settings. So you see security settings, we're going to expand that a little bit. Let me move this window over so you can see what I'm looking at. And then if you scroll down, you should be able to see different things. So we have account policies, we have uh, registry network, all that other good stuff. We're going to expand network policy, or excuse me, account policies, and you'll see a, a password policy right there. Now, we can change this however we want, right? So enforce password history, we can click on that. I'm going to change this to 180 days. 180 doesn't like that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the uh, piece, password history policy. So 24 passwords, which means that we have to, they can't reuse the same password 24 times in a row. So the 25th one, they can go back into there. So we'll hit apply on that one. That's fine. Uh, maximum password age. This is the one I wanted. I'm going to do 180 days for that. I'm going to apply and then OK. And then minimum password age, one day. This is important if you somebody's trying to brute force your passwords, if they intercept a password change, for instance. Uh, let's say that you're doing a, a password change, or your domain's doing, or excuse me, a computer's doing a password change. Uh, somebody can't go in there and just change the password again after like five minutes. Uh, minimum password length, seven characters. That is atrocious. We're going to change that to 14 characters. That is the, for Windows Server, that is the maximum that it will allow. Now, personally, I'd like it to be a little bit higher. I'd like 24, but we can only do 14. We're going to apply that and OK it. And then minimum password length audit is not defined. We can define this policy, and then we can log the event when new password is shorter than, and we can make that you know, eight characters. So it's going to log it anytime somebody tries to do eight characters long. Now, this is a double-edged sword, right? Uh, because you'll see a lot of times where Somebody will go in there and try to do it. So not something I would normally do on an enterprise network, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it's my network, my home lab. And then password must meet minimum complexity. We have that enabled right now. We're going to keep that enabled. So we are good now. Uh, now in order for this to take effect, we have to refresh our, our controllers. Okay. Now if I really wanted to force it down, let's say that I had a lot of computers that were connected to this, I would go into my terminal right here. I call it a terminal, but it's a command prompt for, for Windows. And I can do a, a group policy, so gp update, and then forward slash force. So I can force this group policy update to every uh, computer on my domain, and then it's just going to update the policy. Uh, otherwise, it won't update until uh, the system gets refreshed and reset all the way down. So group policy update has been completed successfully. So that means if I had any computers that were attached to it at this point, uh, this policy would have take effect immediately. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do exit out of that. We have our security policy. I could do other things to this, right? I mean, if you look in here, I could do event logs. I could do local policies. I could do registry. I mean, I would encourage you to kind of look around this, especially if you're going to get into servers. Uh, but for today, for what we're trying to accomplish, more than equitable. Uh, so I'm going to close this out. Now we're going to add a computer into our domain. I have a Windows 10 system already set up in the background. Um, now one of the things I want you to do before you start this sucker up is if you go into your Windows server, it's important to make sure that you're actually on the same network. So you can see that I'm on. Uh, Adapter 1 is already on host only. And I want to go to my Windows 10, and I want to make sure that it's on the same adapter. So if I go to network, it's on host only as well. If I go to my Windows 10 system, I'm going to open up a CMD. I'm going to open up that command prompt, and I'm going to do an IP config. IP config, just like so. I'm on 172.16.1.12, or so 12. If I open up my Windows 
open up that command prompt. I'm going to do another IP config. You can see I'm on 1.8. So I want to make sure I'm on that same net, okay? That's important because otherwise they're never going to talk to one another. Um, so I can close that out. So I'm going to change my Windows 10 first into a uh, static IP. So I'm going to go right click on that uh, network. Right now it looks like it's having some internet issues. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm changing it to a static IP address anyway. It's probably having a DNS issue uh, because we set our Windows Server up to be a DNS and the firewall set up to be a DNS as well. Uh, so I just have to go in there anyway and change that. Uh, so I did options. I'm going to right click on this adapter. I'm going to change the adapter, go down to IPv4. I'm going to use the following IP address. I'm going to do 172.16.1.245. Now, if you remember correctly, when we set up our Windows, or excuse me, our firewall for DHCP, we did uh, 1 through 10 as being, uh, excuse me, 1 through 9 as being static, 10 through 240 as being DHCP, and that may mean that 241 through 255 would be static. Uh, so I'm going to keep this as a static IP address. It's going to self-fill that subnet mask. And then for my gateway, it's going to be 172.16.1.1. That is my firewall's IP address, which we get right here, 172.16, excuse me, 16.1.1. So we're going to keep that there. And then we're going to use a preferred DNS. I'm going to do 172.16.1.8. That is my Windows server. And then my alternate DNS, I'm actually going to use Google 8.8.8.8. Okay, so that's all set up now. I'm going to hit that in there. I'm going to have to go back in. I want to make sure it took effect. So I'm going to do a CMD again. I'm going to do an IP config again. And here I am on, on 172.16.1.245. So everything should be good to go. I'm actually, before I get too far, I'm actually going to ping it. So I'm going to ping 172.16.1.1. It pings OK. I'm also going to ping .8. I want to make sure it's hitting my server OK. It is. And then I'm actually going to ping Amazon. Uh, just because I want to make sure it has access to the outside internet now because we had that issue. So Amazon.com and we do, so that's good. I can actually do an NS lookup as well. Uh, and I'm going to do an NS lookup against Google. I want to make sure it's taking effect. It is. All right, so everything seems to be working just fine for us. Close that out. Uh, my little error went away. So I'm going to get into my computer now. So I'm going to right, or excuse me, click on my file floor there. I'm going to go to this PC right click, go down to properties, and you'll see here about, about three quarters of the way down, we have computer name, domain, and workgroup settings right here. Okay, now let's go ahead and change these settings right here. I'm gonna change settings, and if I remember correctly, I think I'm gonna have an issue because uh, for the name that I provided, that A Apple, which let me get over to the here on the server. If I go to tools and then users and computer, Active Directory users and computers, Bring that up. There it is. Uh, I've got Scottsdale. I want to put it under a Apple. And if I go to account, you see that it says user must change password and next login. If I remember correctly, it's going to give me an error when I try to log in with this a Apple. So I'm going to turn this off, apply and OK. Uh, because if it has that password requirement, it may not work. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it won't. So I'm going to do change right here. I'm going to change this computer name. Now this computer name can be anything that you want it to be, right? I'm going to call this computer name just ops, ops1. We're going to say that this is in my operations thing. And then my domain name is going to be that home lab. And I get this right here, home lab. So I'm going to right click, copy, throw this over here, paste it in there, and press OK. Now it should, should work perfectly fine. And it does. OK, so this is good. So I'm going to use my user login of a Apple. And then the password, if you remember correctly, we set that up as Tor123 exclamation mark. Uh, and let's see what happens. Hopefully this case without a, uh, with, goes off without a hitch. I may have to force that update again on my Windows server uh, if it comes back with that password issue. So it took about a minute. I fast forwarded the video so you don't have to deal with it. And it says, welcome to home lab domain. We're going to press OK. And it says, before restarting, save any open files, close all programs. We're going to press OK. We're going to close this out, and now we need to restart now. So I'm going to let it restart, and when it comes back, we're going to log in with that a Apple uh, with the Tor 123. And we should be on the same domain at that point to be able to push updates and do whatever thing. And so we've added this Windows 10 into our uh, server domain, our, our home lab domain, per se. All right, so let's hit this. 
Now we're, you'll see that we're on IE user and then other user. We need to go to other user and we can sign into home lab. We're gonna do a apple, a apple, just like that. And then our password, that Tor 123 exclamation mark. And we're gonna hit that in there. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a second, we forced a group policy update that required it to have a minimum password. Yes, we did, but because we're not requiring a password change, it's not going to do it. And because we forced that update while this wasn't on the domain, you get where I'm going, right? So when we add this computer under there, we're gonna have to go through and force a password change uh, within the system, which we're gonna do while we're here, okay? Now, if I go back into this PC right here and do properties, you can see that we're computer name is now hops1. We're on the full computer name is ops1.homelab.com and our domain is homelab.com. All right, so we are doing pretty good. Let's go back to our server over here. We're gonna say user must change password at next login. We're gonna apply that. We're gonna press okay. And let's restart this computer again and see what it does. Okay, go back in here. You can see a apple just like we wanted. We're gonna do tor 123 exclamation mark. And it says user's password must be changed before signing in. Exactly what we want. Now let's do this again. Let's do, because I like to test it. Let's do Tor123. We're going to confirm password Tor123. And we basically use the same password. Let's see what it does. It says unable to update the password. Provide a new password does not meet the link, complexity, or history. So that's good. All right. So our current password, let's throw that one in there, Tor123. Uh, and then I'm just going to do Tor tor so double tor and then 123 exclamation mark and then i'll have to do tor with a capital t tor 123 exclamation mark and let's see if it'll let us do it uh unable to update password the value provided new password does not meet the link complexity or history requirements to uh windows with a capital w so that's w i n d that's for o w s seven 123, that'd be 10. And then we'll do, uh, so the 123, we'll do 456. And then exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Oh my gosh, if I'm not gonna remember this. Windows, 123, 456, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. All right, I think I screwed this up. They don't match, okay. Yeah, you get to deal with me dealing with this, right? This is the problem when you do a home lab like this. So Windows, one, two, three, four, five, six, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So Windows, one, two, three, four, five, six, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Password has been changed. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in, to be honest, I'm going to go into my, anytime you start changing passwords like this, because I know myself, I'm not going to remember. You'll see this Windows right here. I'm going to do settings. And then under description, password. We're going to do Windows, one, two, three, four, five, six, estimation mark, exclamation mark. That way I can remember, all right? Throw that in there. All right, so now we're in here and we've set up this Windows into our domain controller. So we are, we're good now. We've got our Windows server with a password policy uh, with the Windows computer set on this. And here's the best part. Let's go back to tools and then Act Directory, users and computers. And I'm going to show you, if we go to computers now, we have Ops1 computer on our domain, right there, okay? And then our Scottsdale office has a Apple, our Glendale office has B Banana, and we have that computer. Okay, so we are good at this point um, with Windows. I think for, for an overview of Windows Server for what we needed today, I think we're good. Um, I think I'm gonna run some scans against it. I think I'll run a Nessus scan and probably an OpenVos scan against it. We'll, we'll identify the differences. We probably aren't gonna find a lot in there because it's just a domain controller with a DNS. Um, but you can see that we could add a bunch more computers on this domain if we wanted to. Uh, you could add a lot of users. You could add anything and everything that you wanted to uh, with this. But for a home lab, I think I'm gonna keep it short and simple. I think one computer is fine. Uh, I have that other Windows 7 system. I may add that on in later. It's pretty much the same 
uh, process and Windows Server or excuse me Windows 7 is out of date so I think we're good for today I think I'm gonna call it here uh, uh, if this video was helpful if you felt like it, it added something to you and provided you some uh, some education awesome I'm really glad please like subscribe and hit that little alert button thank you all have a great one